Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today is the third Sunday of the Blessed Month of Amshir. We've been talking for the past few uh, Sundays about bread. The first Sunday of Amshir, um, we read from John chapter 6. Last week, we read the miracle of the five loaves and two fish. And today, Christ himself says, I am the bread of life. Something very radical. <clears throat> and we'll talk about that. Like all faithful Jews at that time, <clears throat> they know their history. So they brought up the story of the manna in the wilderness. They thought about their ancestors wandering in the desert after being freed from slavery in Egypt. So let's go back to Exodus. I think the context is important. So when we think about the wilderness, we think about this barren place. Very few trees, very few plants, very few animals lived in this wilderness. And so food was lacking and the Israelites were hungry. So our situation in our current day and age has very, very clear parallels, similarities and contrasts to the ancient Israelites, as we see in Exodus chapter 16. So they're, they're very hungry. And they begin to complain to Moses, saying they would rather have died with full bellies in Egypt than rather be hungry and free in the wilderness, right? They're ungrateful. They're ungrateful for their freedom, and they lacked faith. Of course, God already had a plan to feed his people. And that evening, quails came and covered the camp. And in the morning, manna lay all over the ground. Manna was a, a fine, small, round substance, tasted like wafers made of honey, right? That's the kind of description that we have. Moses stated that it was the bread the Lord has given. The bread the Lord has given. And so while providing food for the Israelites, God laid down three commandments for consuming the manna. He said, first, every man was to gather according to the need of his family. Second, he was to gather every morning. And third, he was to gather twice as much on Friday in order to rest, meaning not to gather on the Holy Sabbath of the Lord. Why did God give these commandments? He says that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. That I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. This is in Exodus chapter 16, verse 4. So we have to remember that God provided the manna in the first place so that the Israelites shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt and see the glory of the Lord. So these commandments, the Lord also gave to teach the Israelites holiness by these three principles. Number one, to discipline and guard against gluttony. To have regular habits of work to avoid laziness and to have purposeful rest in order to worship God. So now, as God sought to test his people, some were testing him. They were trying to hoard more than their need. Some were lazily gathering less. Others were going out on the Sabbath to gather. So God was prepared to teach these prideful people. In verse 18, it says, For he who gathered much had nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no lack. The Israelites were supposed to consume the manna daily, but those who tried to hoard it in their homes, they found it spoiled. Some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather, but they found none. So it took them a long time to learn because the children of Israel ate manna for 40 years in the wilderness. 40 years. The great multitude of the disciples who followed our Lord in the gospel that we see today, this comes from John chapter 6, they knew the story of the Israelites. They knew the story of the manna in the wilderness. They know their history. He said, our fathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, 
Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. This is from today's gospel. The people must have begun to understand that he was indeed the Son of God, the same God who fed the Israelites hundreds of years before. So we can learn a couple of lessons here. Let's look at Sunday mornings. The church has prescribed for us not to work on the Lord's day, to fast from food, to fast from sin in preparation to receive the new manna, the new bread from heaven, which is the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have to ask ourselves, have we made ourselves physically hungry through fasting in order to to focus on our spiritual hunger for God? Another lesson, let's look at our daily meals. Do we look up to heaven, understanding that the food before us and every single meal that we have and everything ultimately is from God? Do we have that perspective? As a family, do we pray around our meals? Do we give thanks to God that he has given us this blessing? Do we break and share our food and our possessions with others, especially those who are in need? These, these holy habits of mind and body, they serve to till the ground of our hearts and our souls. We live in a society and in a world that we would call spiritually desolate, a wilderness. And we're constantly influenced by this environment that lacks a connection with God. Our complaints in life often are focused on things that we think is wrong with this world and the people that are around us. And absolutely there are things that are wrong when we absolutely look for it with a microscope. Fixing the people and the world around us is impossible. And we get really frustrated. And when we pray to God, we feel like our, our prayers are not answered. We get frustrated with God. Letting God fix us is possible. We have to thank God for the material food and the possessions that God has blessed us with. We have to look towards Christ for spiritual fulfillment when we're bored, when we're in pain, when we're persecuted, when we feel alone. His manna is found in prayer. His manna is found in his word. His manna is found in the spiritual counsel with our Father Confession. His manna is found in reconciliation. His manna is found when we feed people. And his manna is found in many of the holy habits that the church teaches. If we are all seeking to be fed and to be filled in this manner, then as St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, there will be no divisions among you and we will be perfectly joined together in the same mind. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the manna. So using this image of manna, the bread from heaven given by the Lord God, Jesus has something very radical to his audience. What does he say? He says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. And he goes on to say, uh, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. Our Lord makes a very clear connection between the manna and God and heaven and himself. Just like the manna came down from heaven from God, so also our Lord Jesus Christ comes from God in heaven to become our bread of life. The message is that we need him to survive in our, in our wilderness of society. This is the message. And the people murmur. They don't like it. Just like the ancient Israelites, when they, when they complained and murmured against Moses and Aaron for being hungry, the people 
that our Lord is talking to, even us today, they murmur against him in this radical teaching. In verse 40, it says that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life. And then in verse 41, the Jews then complain against him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. They knew exactly what he was saying. And our Lord in verse 43 says, Therefore, uh, do not murmur among yourselves. Our Lord condemns the complaining. He condemns the murmuring. When we hear something about God's teachings that make us uncomfortable, if you will, that we don't like it. Sometimes people, when they <clears throat> hear a teaching from the church or from the words of God himself directly, they don't like it because it affects my lifestyle. So instead of, instead of altering my lifestyle in accordance to God's will, I follow my will. And they say, okay, thank you very much. I'm going to find a teaching that corresponds to the way that I think. The message gets more radical. It's not part of today's gospel, but I wanted to share it. So if, if you are already uncomfortable with that, what our Lord just said, that he is the son of God from heaven and the bread of life, think how uncomfortable or even scandalized a person would be after hearing what he says next. In verse 48, which is not part of today's gospel, he says, I am the bread of life. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. And Jesus said to them, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life. And I will raise them up in the last day. Our Lord re-emphasizes that he is the bread of life. He doubles down. And he makes it abundantly clear that he is the living bread come down from heaven. And he deepens the message by saying that the living bread is his flesh. And unless we eat it and drink his blood, we have no life in us. And here we arrive at the foundational teaching coming from the mouth of Christ himself for the Eucharist, for the communion. We take the offering of the bread and wine every time that we have a liturgy and we pray that God's Holy Spirit come down and transform it mysteriously into the very body and the flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the foundational teaching of the church. We receive it with thanksgiving for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. If we, as Coptic Orthodox Christians, want to have eternal life, the life with God within us, then we must eat the flesh and drink the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is not an optional command. This is what distinguishes us from other religions, from many other non-denominational uh, non churches. We have the Eucharist. We are able to commune directly with God. Some may say, I'm a good person. I don't necessarily need the Eucharist, or perhaps I only need it just one or two times in the year. Maybe on the resurrection feast, maybe an nativity feast. Good ethics, good morals, good values are important and they are necessary, but one does not need to be an Orthodox Christian or even to be a Christian to be a good person. You can go to all sorts of other organizations to hear about being a good person. It's only in the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Orthodox Church that we hear about eating the flesh and drinking the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's only here that we have the Eucharist and it's offered multiple times a week. This is the cornerstone to our faith. This is, this is the big meal. Sometimes we get distracted and we focus our attention 
Even in the Orthodox Church, we focus our attention on other services that seem to be the meal. That's not the meal. Forgive me, Sunday school is not the meal. This is the meal. This is everything. And, the, and during the time of, uh, of Corona and all that kind of stuff that was happening in 2020, I actually, this is going to be very controversial. I'm kind of embarrassed that it's recorded, but I was very happy that we were able to cut everything except for liturgies. This is my own personal, you know. <laughs> I was very happy that the church said the most important thing that we can offer the people is communion. That was it. And sometimes, unfortunately, we get too focused on everything else. And we kind of forget about taking the, 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 the flesh and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the most important thing that we can do as Christians. God told the Israelites through Moses to gather and eat the manna every day. They were not supposed to save some for later because it would spoil. And so the implicit message there was to labor each day for food from heaven. All of us are responsible for that. Don't rely on your own efforts and your own plans to sustain yourself. For us, that means that we should gather ourselves in the church whenever communion is offered, whenever we can, whenever it's possible. Sometimes we feel like, check, I went on Sunday. Even though I had the entire week off for Wednesday and Friday and any other times that it's offered, but no, check, I gathered for myself. This should last. Every time that we don't receive the Eucharist, it's a missed opportunity. So I'll conclude. After our Lord's radical teachings about the bread of life, it says in, God, in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6, verse 66, that many of his disciples drew back and no longer went about with him. They were upset. I pray that we do not draw back, but we instead examine ourselves, judge ourselves, to be sure that we believe and we trust in his commandments. I pray that we go with him and do our very best to follow and to fulfill his commandments, especially the commandment to eat his flesh and to drink his blood, for he is Christ our God, the true bread of life, and glory be to God forever. Amen.